One leg's flipped right around. This time they really laid the beats into him. Like, not only did they knock him over, but they also just beat the heck out of him. Corked him. Yeah. Oh, buddy, I'm sorry. He's gonna start to hate us. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna come here and he's gonna pack up and go home. He's like, oh. Ever did this, not only knocked him down, but they, they pushed him around on the ground for a bit. After one of the most successful early falls that we've had to date, we returned home to start preparing for the grueling month of November, sitting in a tree stand every day. As bucks slowly start to return to their rutting areas, we cast out a wide net of covert trail cameras and try to cover as much ground as possible as we try to pick out a couple shooter bucks that we can begin focusing on. Every year, we have a couple of deer in mind from the previous season that we hope will show back up and give us another chance to study them. But for the fall of 2020, things weren't quite that easy. We noticed a sharp drop in shooter class bucks from the years before, with as many as 70% of our target bucks not showing up from the year prior. And as much as we wanted to figure out why, we had to turn our attention to the ones that did and quickly try to figure out how to hunt them. After the first trail camera pull of the year, we immediately noticed three shooter bucks hanging out in one small pocket of the bush, and the decision to set up and hunt them was quite easy. Trying to get this heater body suit on. It's always, it's always a lot of work to get this thing on. And I got some new fancy heated boots, so I'm trying to turn those on. I tested the boots out yesterday and they worked pretty good. They didn't last quite all day, but almost, which is up from where I used to be. So. This is a brand new setup um, that Dana and John put up just last week, I think it was. We actually were hunting not too far from here last year, but this is a really good spot. Um, Dana has a bunch of really nice bucks on tr on um, the covert this year. We have um, two really nice 5x5s and a really nice 5x4. So honestly, any of them I'd be open to getting a shot at this year. Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Covert Scouting Cameras, Vortex Optics, Old Smokes Coffee, Top Notch Taxidermy Studio, and the MD of Bonneville. This segment of the show is brought to you by Deluxe Wall Tents. 
built in Canada for Canadian conditions. This segment of the show is brought to you by Vortex, the force of optics. I already had some luck with this gun this year, so hopefully I can do it again. I finally was able to get an elk this year with this gun. Sure be nice to get a whitetail too. As the sun peeked through the trees on her second day in the stand for the season, Darcy hit the rattling antlers together to try and break the silence of the forest. The thick snow on the branches was really cutting our visibility down, making it hard to see more than a hundred yards. As we sat watching carefully, I looked over my back shoulder and spotted a buck staring right at us. It wasn't until he started to walk away that we got a good enough look at him to figure out that it was the nine-pointer that we had came to hunt. One minute he was there, and the next he was gone. And just like that, we had missed our opportunity. But as we started to get settled back into the stands, Darcy caught movement in the trees in the distance, and a few minutes later, the larger, heavier 5x5 stepped into our world. Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Wood Wheaton Supercenter True Fire Releases Gorilla Black Widow Innovations Phone Scope and Federal Premium Ammunition This segment of the show is brought to you by The MD of Bonneville Lake adventures happen here. I think I was looking at the right moment there. I, right back there in the thick stuff, I, I was looking right there and I saw movement and immediately I was like deer. And then I, so I told Dana I, there was a deer there and then I was looking and looking and I couldn't see anything. So then I thought maybe it was snow that fell because snow's been falling all day. Um, but then Dana finally spotted him with his binos up there. And immediately we knew that was a shooter. I mean, I can see his horns from here. Like he's for sure a 10 point, I think. And he looked really heavy in the scope. My first day of hunting. Two years in a row. <laughs> two years in a row. The last two days I was filming Dana, we were after a, a giant deer, um, but the area just wasn't working out for hunting them. So we decided to switch it up after we got this huge dump of snow last night or all day yesterday, I guess, and last night. Like we got like a foot of snow probably. It's been crazy. Um, and deer are moving. I mean, this morning, not so much, but in the last half an hour here, we saw two of our, or two deer for sure. One of them was for sure one that we have a picture of. 
the nine point and I was actually gonna shoot him because <laughs> he's a really nice nine point. But um, I'm pretty sure this one's way bigger, so. Way bigger. So good thing I didn't shoot the nine point. I mean, I didn't actually have an opportunity at the nine point. But if he was, if he came back, I was gonna shoot that one, so. He is a gorgeous buck. Look at these bladed main beams. He has he has bladed tines, really nice brow tines. Just an overall really nice mature buck. Uh, Dana's had pictures of him on the covert cameras all year. He actually said it was the first nice mature buck that we got a picture of this year again. Um, but just an overall really, really nice mature buck. Couldn't have worked out better. Spotted him, he walked right exactly where I needed him to walk so I could get a nice clean shot at him. And it's actually funny because this is my second year in a row that my first day sitting in the stand sitting or hunting whitetails, I was able to harvest a deer. And honestly, it's a, it's a matter of luck because in the bush here, you never know when they're gonna walk by. This is a spot that has two or three good shooter bucks in it and I'm really hoping that uh, I know Daniel's gonna be sitting here for at least a little bit. Hopefully Josie can come in here and spend some time and maybe get a shot at that nine pointer that slipped by us today. And because it's literally 80 yards from the tree stand, we actually, we got him loaded up and we're gonna take him to the truck. We'll leave as little behind here as we can so that there's no wolves or coyotes or hopefully not too many ravens sticking around. And we're in the area because with any luck, we'll shoot another one out of here. What are you doing? Setting the new world record for the amount of hitchhikers pulled from a pair of pants in an evening. Good buddy Daniel Martichuk left tonight from Prince George and he's making his way out here. So, spend the next 10 days on our annual whitetail adventure. We uh, always seem to have some fun and have been known to kill a big deer or two in our day, so. Wow, that's a good brow time on him, eh? Holy. That's a nice buck. Plus the narrow. That's the buck I'm after? That's the nine point. Okay. <laughs> He'll do. There's a better video than right here. Oh, yeah. Big frame on him, but he's like, not real heavy. Look at Doug. <laughs> oh my god, I'm sweating like a fat pig. <laughs> Buggy, you're so beautiful. Oh, it is bedtime though. You got it, you got it. <sighs> well, you know what he looks like now, anyways. He walks by, shoots him. I shoust. <laughs> Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Mad Ramps, High Mountain Seasoning, Arcan Trailer and RV, Block Targets, Eye Hunter, Glendale Targets and deluxe wall tents. This segment of the show is brought to you by Wood Wheaton Supercenter, a proud supporter of our outdoor heritage. A little windy today. At least I get to be tucked in a nice warm ground blind. You're on the top of a hill. Shoot a deer by nine and Color, color day, anyways. Got so much stuff, it's just piled high. Marcy, do you know how to get to the stand? I think I know how to get to the stand. <laughs> I know what it looks like. We'll find it. It looks like a tree stand. I've been here before. This is where we're gonna head to the stand uh, where I shot my deer about a week ago. There's a couple more super deer there. Just look for the big commotion. We'll be driving down the trail straight in, and you'll see where we turned in to go get her deer. It stands right there, so. Yeah, it hasn't snowed much since I shot my deer. Yeah. 
saw my deer a week ago, so we should still see tracks. We'll find it. I know where it is. There should be a whole pile of deer tracks around there too, because it was pounded last time I was in there. If we get lost, I'll call you. I ain't gonna do you no good, so. <laughs> What's that? Did you shoot him? I got him broadside for like a split second. I don't think I've seen him on camera though. But... I don't know if I hit him though. I took a shot and then I heard some crashing, so. I think that was the last, the last opportunity I was gonna get. But if he walked up here, I would have been able to see him a lot more, I think. I found him! He's down! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh. Yes! I got him! Woo! Give me a hug! <laughs> yes! I thought I missed that deer. I got the last glimpse of him walking up this hill from the stand. I don't even, I can't see the stand at all. But I had my scope right there where I thought he would walk. I caught a glimpse of his front shoulder and I, I squeezed the trigger and it didn't freeze this time. And he, I heard a loud crash and I didn't see him running after that. So we're, we started rattling as soon as it got light. And then all of a sudden I look down the trail and I'm like, oh, there's a deer, big body on it. Just walked around, glimpse, 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 gone. And I'm like, oh man. So I was like, okay, we'll rattle again, rattle again. And then Darcy's like, oh, I see him. Comes up way over here, crosses the line again and starts walking down right towards us. He was probably 75 yards coming right down that ridge in front of us, line up on him, got him, yeah, yeah, click. <laughs> Click. Oh no. So I take my bolt out. I've got it in my jacket and Darcy's like, oh, he's here. Yeah, he's here. He's there. And I'm like grunting just to try to keep him around. And then all of a sudden I catch him walking and I was like, oh, and all I caught, I caught his front half coming out from behind a tree and my crosshairs were right on him. I was like, boom, <laughs> gun worked. You hear me in the video. I'm like, whoops. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I didn't get the impact of, the, we didn't get the impact of the bullet, man, but how everything went down, like, 